Hello there, good people, and welcome to the Corona Physical Material Tutorial Series. This series will be all about learning the ropes, the basics, if you will, of the new physical material that got introduced in Corona Render 7. Now, this is a pretty big series because materials are one of the most important things when it comes to rendering. And with the new physical material, we're aiming to improve this key part of the rendering process for you. Now, the way that the series is designed is we'll start off talking about some basic theory that's behind the physical material. We will actually do that in this clip here. And then after we get theorized, uh, we'll just fire up 3ds Max and we'll start creating some of the basic materials that you'll probably want to know how to create in your own rendering adventures. So then, as you can probably imagine, when we'll be creating those materials, we'll also be learning more about how the physical material works and how to use it. Okay, all right, so that's the game plan of what we plan on doing here. But you know, it's always a good idea to start reading a book from the beginning rather than starting at the end, where you spoil the story for yourself by immediately learning that the hero already saved the world and the villain actually used to be a nice guy but with a bad origins story. So let's rewind and let's start at the very beginning here by basically just getting acquainted with the physical material. The new physical material is a brand new material that has been designed from the ground up to make your material creation process even easier and even more intuitive than it was before. But it doesn't stop there because the new physical material is also more realistic than its predecessor because of all of the under the hood changes. Here's a couple of images that our team created as we were developing the material. And as you can see, there's just so much that you can do with the new physical material. You can really dial in those details. And what's really great about it is it's also a very versatile material, but at the same time, really easy to understand. It is based on various kinds of physical models. And so you can really expect realistic results out of it. Now, what are some of the more tangible benefits of using the new physical material? Well, at the risk of repeating myself, and we do think this is worth saying at least a couple of times, the new physical material is built from the ground up and it looks more realistic. And it also makes it easier to create physically plausible materials as well. But now let's get even more specific than that. Okay. And if we do that, well, we got to start by talking about greater realism because one of the main benefits of using the new physical material is just the overall greater realism that you'll get. Okay. The new physical material uses a Oranair diffuse BSDF under the hood, which means that the way that the light interacts with the material will be different than with the previous material. And by different, we mean improved. Now we won't get into too much details here because this is a complex topic, but as you can see on the image in front of you, the material behaves differently, more realistically. Now that isn't down to just switching to the Oranair model, because as we mentioned, the new physical material is built from the ground up and it's built on various kinds of physical models. And so there's a lot of different complex changes under the hood that would require a degree in computer science to cover. So at this point, we'll stick to saying that due to all of the changes, the new physical material is more realistic in general, period. Right. And then as the next big benefit, the physical material supports a new and improved material UI. And the idea here is that the new UI is laid out better so that you can work more efficiently. And then also it's sort of designed to work with you and make sure you stay in the realm of physically plausible materials. But we'll talk more about the new UI just a bit later on. Now, the next benefit we've listed is the fact that you'll now have new, really useful parameters that you'll want to tweak for your materials. And then also we're presenting a very important, crucial even feature, which is the metalness workflow. Now, similarly, as with the UI, we'll go more into the details about the metalness workflow later on. Actually, we'll learn more about it in the next tutorials in the series. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, what we want to mention as a benefit next is then definitely the new built-in clear coat layer. This is a really cool, super useful feature that'll enable you to create that awesome looking clear code layer, such as 
varnish, for example. And you'll be able to do that from right inside the physical material. And the same holds true for creating the sheen effect that certain fabrics sport, because with the new physical material, you'll have a sheen layer built in there. So that it's really easy to turn on and get that extra realism going for your fabric materials. Right. Then the new physical material also conforms to industry standards better, even though industry standards are kind of a loosely defined term on its own. But yeah, now we support the roughness parameter for controlling the blurriness of your reflections, if you will. And then we also support switching between the IOR and specular workflows. Last, but definitely not least, we'd like to emphasize that with the new physical material, we've further improved the way that glass is being rendered. Now, again, this is just a list of some of the key benefits that there are to using the new physical material. And we've just quickly ran over the list because we'll go more into the details as we progress here, because the plan is to basically demo all these features slash benefits as we go along and create the most typical materials that you'll probably end up creating in your own projects as well. Now, before we actually jump into 3ds Max, Let's just take a moment or two to go over the UI real quickly here. So on the left here, you'll see the physical materials UI and on the right, the legacy materials UI. Yes, the material that you've used for the last couple of years is now called the Corona legacy material. As far as the differences between the two materials go, well, let's first start by highlighting the fact that with the new physical material, you have this group here called the base layer. The idea behind the base layer is that it contains all of those basic properties a basic layer of the material would have. So you can think of it as basically that most common set of properties that you'll tweak for just about every material. And those basic properties typically are diffuse and reflection properties. Okay. Now compared to the legacy material in Corona 6, you'll be able to notice that previously we've had the diffuse and reflection layers split. And now, as we've noted just seconds ago, basically, with the physical material, both of those layers reside under that base layer as they're no longer split. Now, what's the logic behind all of this? You're probably wondering, right? Well, the physical material works differently under the hood. It is more realistic and in reality, the base layer basically contains both the diffuse and reflection properties as those are not really split in reality. And so the material itself here mimics that. On top of that, this sort of grouping also makes sense because now when you're tweaking the most basic settings of pretty much every material, because every material has some sort of a base layer, you'll be tweaking them in that base layer group and will no longer be tweaking them into separate groups. Next thing, you'll probably notice that we are one IOR parameter short in the new physical material. Now that is not by accident at all, because the new physical material is, well, it's supposed to be physical. And in reality, your material will only be defined by a single IOR value. So it basically means that the index of refraction, IOR in short, right? It's controlling both your reflections as well as your refractions. And that is the realistic way of doing things. Now, as for the rest of the novelties, well, we have the metalness workflow dropdown up here, which is a really important parameter and we'll cover it early on in this series as we progress. And then we got these new extra parameters that you can tweak. And then some minor things have been rearranged or renamed as well. So they make a bit more sense and are more easily accessible. Such as, for example, the fact that the thin shell checkbox is now up there at the top of all the properties, basically, because if you think about it, if need be, it is a parameter that you'll want to tweak very early on in the material creation process. And so it's now arranged to be at the top there. So you don't need to tweak a setting that's somewhere in the middle of all the properties, but it's otherwise quite important as it defines how the entire material behaves. Yeah. Okay. So for the most part, that's where we'll leave things here. The new UI is designed to be more efficient to use 
And then it's also a bit different because the new physical material is designed to be physically realistic and the UI mimics that. Now that concludes this video. And what we'll do in the next one is we'll jump into 3ds Max and we're going to get to work. We'll be creating our very first physical material with the help of an awesome new addition to the material creation process that is now available to you with the physical material. And that addition is the new material presets functionality. See you in the next one, everybody.